okay, hopefully I got that right. So um, in case anybody's, I, I mean, I'm gonna try and record these um, and I'll, I will uh, put these sessions up. So yeah, I mean, there, there's, you don't have to even do these online uh, help sessions uh, uh, interactively. Um, so um, you should be able to look at these asynchronously and kind of offline. Um, um, if they're of use, use to people, kind of to see what we discussed or what questions people were having, things like that. So probably I'm thinking I'm just going to um, also just put these on YouTube since YouTube's a lot easier for me to work with than, than our MyLeo online class management system to a lot faster to you to get stuff uploaded. So I'll probably just add these kind of to the end of the video playlist as, as I make these. Uh, um, Okay, did uh, anybody have questions or things about the class or if you have questions about DevBox, getting it set up, let me know. Um, although, like I said, you know, th those kinds of things I might have to um, do more kind of one-on-one -on -one if, if people have continuing to have problems getting that set up uh, through today and tomorrow. So. So I'm probably only going, to, only going to go another maybe half an hour at most here. Uh, I, I was going to maybe talk a little bit about Python. So I mean, once you get your dev box up, uh, you should basically work through these first three lecture notebooks uh, this week. So the, the kind of Python programming, um, um, I, I talked about the basics. So again, I, I assume that you do have done some programming before, whether academic or otherwise. So you know how to do things like write functions and loops, uh, if statements, things like that, um, but not necessarily in Python, right? So, so oh, and, and another thing about this, um, you know, our, our goal isn't that you learn all of the details of the Python language. Um, I just want you to learn enough so that you can, you know, understand the examples and 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 uh, work on the assignments and things right so so python's a relatively big language although it, it's rel it's also relatively simple i believe for for most beginners to pick up uh, and get going relatively uh, quickly with it so uh, but yeah this first week i'm just going over kind of uh functions control structures um and then the second video um uh, and, and lecture notebook is kind of uh, more like a, a data structures. Um, so uh, we go through classes. Let me bring up the the, the table of contents here. So yeah, so all of the data structure strings. Uh, maybe I'll go through this real quickly a little bit. Some of these things. So uh, strings, lists, dictionaries, tuples, um, uh, and then the third one is about object-oriented programming in Python. So uh, we'll need to be able to, to, to do a few things where we create some classes in Python of our own and, and use some of the object-oriented features of it. So. All right, um, I think I'll just leave my help kind of full screen, but about one third there. So, um, so I already re-ran all this. So, so the, the first notebook is just starting right from the beginning. So, you know, um, Python is a, um, Could be right. Um, somebody's asking about latency issues. Um, um, so I can talk. I mean, we can, we can certainly talk some more also about getting your dev boxes set up. So if you've uh, if you've only got four megabytes of memory, I mean, um, it should work. But I would I expect that you might have some performance issues. Uh, it would be better if you could have more than more like eight megabytes of memory. But but you should be okay with four megabytes. Um, but but that could be if, if you're a lower amount of memory. 
but there might be other things that we can do like like change the amount of memory that you use or, or some things um, to help if, if you continue to experience uh, some performance problems. So. Um, so Python um, is an interpreted language, like I've mentioned. So um, it, um, as opposed to like a compiled language, so that allows you to run uh, interpreters, which is you know kind of what is being done behind the scenes of this Jupyter notebook. Uh, and to interactively uh, enter in commands. Um, and so it remembers, um, so instead of having to compile into an executable that you kind of run uh, statically, it, it, it remembers um, the values of variables and things as you're typing them in and changing um, um, and executing, you know, interpreting new statements and things like that. So um, we create variables in Python by just assigning a value to some name. Um, and the, the names of variables um, follow kind of the conventions of other programming languages that you might be familiar with. So, you know, they, they can't start with like a number. Um, uh, you can only use upper and lowercase letters and numbers and like an underscore. So, um, notice that, that Python is not like a strongly typed language like C that you, that you might be. Um, more familiar with or um, um, Java or some others. So you don't, you don't, we don't have to specify that X is an integer. I mean, I'll tell the interpreter that. Okay? Um, I mean, it does use, um, it is using types um, like you're, again, that you are probably familiar with behind the scenes. Okay, so if I assign a value like five to X, uh, X really does have a type associated with it. it. It infers the type of the value from what you assign into it, okay? Um, and that's what I had later on here. So, so you can use a built-in function like type to actually kind of discover uh, what the type uh, is of the variable. So, so in this case, um, it's an int. if I give something that's more like a, a floating point value, um, floating point literal, um, It'll use a, a float type for, for the, the variable x behind the scenes, right? Um, so we've got other types like um, booleans, right? So, so, so a boolean is a, is a specific type, unlike maybe in C. Some languages don't have a built-in a built boolean type, but Python does. Um, has complex numbers as a type. Strings are also a, a built-in fundamental um, type uh, of the language that some languages have or in, uh, don't have. In some languages, it's more like a, 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 an object. Um, so so um, Oh, so in this case, I got an error because I'm expecting a variable that should hold a number uh, because the percent D tries to do uh, formatting uh, as a decimal number, but it can't do that with a string anymore. So I could change that to print it out as a string, for example. Um, if you're coming from C and Java, um, uh, a single quote doesn't mean like a character. You can use either single quotes or double quotes for strings uh, either way, but you can't use them. Yeah, if, if you start with a double quote, you have to end with a double quote. Um, so you can't mix them, right? Um, although that's kind of a trick. So if I want to have a single quote inside of a, of a string, I can use double quotes on the outside so I can get single quotes inside of my string. And vice versa, if, if you want, if you wanted to. So, um, 
All right, so that's probably enough about, I mean, you know, so, so to create a variable that they're created dynamically, all you have to do is assign some value into a new variable name. And of course you can change existing values. So now, um, now that X has the string in it, um, I can change it to hold in an integer if I want to. And so on, right? Um, you can do uh, regular kinds of arithmetic expressions. Again, I, I, this should be pretty similar to whatever programming languages that you might have experience with or are coming from. So if you need to do numerical calculations, you can add, subtract, multiply, divide. Um, there's a power operator, which is the two stars. So some programming languages use like an upper what do you call it, carrot, to, to do raising to a power. Python uses two stars. Uh, so yeah, like I mentioned here, uh, the upper carrot is actually an operator, but it's a, a bitwise exclusive or. So you, you, if you're thinking that's raised to a power, you won't get what you're expecting um, if you do that. Um, So by default, this is different from some languages like C. By default, the slash performs floating point division. Now in Python 3, it used to be different in Python 2, uh, but this is actually a better default. This is usually what you want. But you can force what is known as integer division. So, so if I really want like a whole number result, I can use a, like a double slash um, to, to, to perform uh, integer division uh, here. So. Um, and you can, and of course you can use parentheses um, and 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 rely on the order of precedence um, um, to make more complex um, numeric expressions or arithmetic expressions um, to do calculations. So. Uh, all right, we're already talked about types um, and about creating new variables and assigning variables and things. Um, um, yeah, so let's, let's talk a little bit about functions. Okay, so functions, I, I tend to emphasize these, um, you know, their usage uh, uh, in classes that I teach. Uh, people uh, kind of jump right to maybe object-oriented programming or things like that, but but uh, I mean learning to use functions well in a programming language is, is, is a fundamental sort of thing. You know, it's, it's how we break down our big problems into smaller pieces and how we do code reuse and everything. So, so you should understand functions well no matter what kind of programming language you're using and, and how to use them. So we've, we've, we've used some, there, there's lots of built-in functions like type and print, uh, and there's lots of others. Um, so like uh, there's functions for converting things between different types. So you can convert strings to integers and things like that. So, um, uh, so besides kind of the basic built-in functions, there's also, you can get function, there's the, one of the big powerful things about Python is the library of, of stuff that's available for use uh, from the language. So there's all kinds of libraries that are um, standard, um, but also contributed and provided libraries. So, so just a quick example is like the math uh, function library. So in general, if you want to use a library, if, if it's not like, like a fundamental built-in function or type, um, you have to do an import statement. So that's how you import uh, reuse code that other people have written. Um, so these are, these are actually, uh, th these are usually called modules in Python. So we talk about this as importing the math module. So I, I call them libraries, um, but, uh, but same idea basically. Um, so there's a built-in function called dir, which allows you to introspect and, and, and get information about all of the um, 
things that are in the, the, the namespace. So when you import, uh, Python uses the idea of namespaces. Uh, again, this is lots of languages do this nowadays. So, so it wasn't part of the original C language, for example, but you can do namespaces in C++ now, uh, in Java. So, but this is nice. So whenever you import um, uh, a library, uh, by default, it imports it into a, a namespace of its own. So all of these functions in the math library, like sines and cosines and logarithms and things, um, they're all going to be in the math namespace if I import it like this, right? So if I want to use a function like the, if, so you can have other things besides functions inside of modules. Um, you can have, um, so I probably should have paused my video like, like I did before. So, um, but um, yeah, I mean, you can, you, know, you can have constants, just variables inside of libraries. So, so pi is defined in the math library, to, so you can have access to the, the, the value of pi as a constant, or e, another constant. Um, but, uh, but yeah, or, or you, can, you can access functions. So, so most all the stuff in the, the math library are functions the sines and cosines and things. So, you know, you can calculate sines by doing math dot. So, so the way you access things inside namespaces, again, this is pretty simple. The, the same thing is done in, in languages like Java um, and C and, and things. So whenever you have um, objects or, or entities or, or namespaces like this, we use this dot operator to access things inside of that namespace, uh, like the sine function. Um, Um, all right, and yeah, I'm probably going a little bit slower than I want to, um, but um, so well, simply then, you know, besides reusing functions that other people have built, um, you know, a thing that you'll be doing a lot in this class is defining your own functions for different purposes, different aspects of things, right? So, so the basic way to define a function in Python is to use the def keyword, def is for defining a new function. Um, so functions like pretty much like all functions in all languages have three parts usually. You have to give a name to kind of your block of code that, that, that you're writing, your function, the, the, the piece of, you know, your reusable piece of code that you're trying to create. So it has a name, um, it has input parameters, although, you know, functions can, uh, you can have functions that don't need any inputs, which is the case here. Um, and the functions can return values, okay? So uh, again, since Python doesn't have like strong typing, we don't have to specify like the return type, what, what, the, what, what the return is or what the type of the value is, it's return, okay? So, but you can return values from functions in Python like you can um, in, in most any programming language. Huh? So here, uh, so this is an example of defining a function. So, so you give the name, uh, the, the def keyword. Uh, later on, we'll see you can have some input parameters. You, you put those between the parentheses, and then you put the colon at the end of the line. And then everything after that is going to be the function or the, the body or the implementation of the function, right? And notice, um, so one thing that, that, that is relatively unique about Python, not, not a lot of other languages do this, is we use indentation to indicate code blocks in Python. So, so languages that most people um, are familiar with, if you haven't done Python before, will use some sort of an open and closing um, indicator to, to define a, a code block, a block of related statements, right? So like a curly brace for C++ and Java, right? Or you might use like a, a parentheses for list, lisp, um, for example. So, but uh, but yeah, so so we don't we don't do that. So for Python, basically everything that's indented the same level uh, will be within a block. So these two statements are in a code block. Okay. All right. So so 
So we define a function like that. And if we want to invoke the function, we just give the name of the function with parentheses. Um, and again, if, we, if our function had input parameters, we could send those parameters. So we'll show an example of that in a second. Uh, but, but, but yeah, this, this, so this first one, we defined the function. And the second one here, we invoked the function. So invoking a function will cause that bit of code that you encapsulate inside of the function to be run, basically. Functions can call other functions. So I can have another function that just, just calls print functions twice. So that's perfectly, not only perfectly valid, it's, it's very common to have functions calling other functions that call other functions, right? So you break up a big problem by, by, by writing some, you know, breaking up into smaller pieces that you write functions for, and then you break those up into smaller pieces um, until you have functions that are small enough that you can, understand and write and, and implement. So. so yeah, I mean, like all programming languages that you're probably familiar with, uh, statements normally run from top to bottom. So when you invoke a function, that's kind of a way of doing a jump or, or uh, invoking things in a different order. So yeah, when, when I run a cell like this, um, so in this case, when you're doing an interpreted language like this, um, before you can actually invoke the function, like I tried to do here, you actually first have to define the function. So if, so if I tried to invoke the function, um, and um, so, so Python supports uh, doing exception processing using try accept blocks, which you may have used before, but I'll get rid of that. So if I try to invoke the function before I've actually defined it, uh, you'll get an exception thrown that, that this function hasn't been defined. Okay, but now notice uh, here, here's kind of a weird thing about using an interpreter like this or using a language that has an interpreter behind the the, the scenes. Um, oh no, I'm sorry. So this this exception um, caused um, this code not to be executed. Okay, so um, I mean some example function is still not uh, defined yet. So again, if I still try to, to uh, invoke it, um, it won't be defined, right? So um, anyway, th I mean, the gist is, is that, uh, you know, things are invoked, are, are done sequentially. So before you can invoke a function, you first have to define it. So once I've defined it, uh, like, like now, now I've successfully defined it, now I can invoke the function uh, if I want to call it. All right. Um, let me see. Let me look at the table of contents here real quickly. All right. Um, so yeah, I might skip over so well. Um, so uh, kind of just to finish up functions. So, so functions wouldn't be very useful if we couldn't pass values into them uh, and return results. So to pass a value into a function, you, you provide one or more parameters, okay? So here we just have one input. Um, and again, since, since Python isn't strongly typed, um, I can actually kind of, this is, what you would accomplish in another language by using function overloading. So to allow a function that has different signatures. So I have one version of the function where I can pass in strings and one version of the function where I can pass in um, uh, integers and so on, right? Uh, you can get kind of the same effect basically in Python. So since we don't really uh, associate types with, with these variables. Uh, I can pass in a variable of any type and as long as however I use it, as, as long as I can successfully use the variable with that type, um, everything will be fine as far as Python is concerned, right? So here, as long as you can print out whatever it is I pass in, these two print statements will succeed and I can correctly call the function. So. Uh, print knows how to print out strings, so I can pass in a string to, to Bruce and I'll print out the, the string two times. But print can handle integers just, just as well, so I can pass in an integer and print out my integer twice. 
um, knows how to, to print out floating point numbers. So I can pass in a floating point number like pi. Right? You can have multiple parameters. Okay, so you have two parameters. Um, right? Um, um, I can have three parameters, four parameters, many parameters. Right. So as you're doing these, so, so if I want, uh, I, I didn't execute this cell again yet. So uh, if I try to do it like this, um, I'll get an error because um, the, the one that I executed only took two parameters, right? So uh, I need to, you need, you need to first, again, execute. I want the version. By re-executing this, it replaced the old version with the new version in my interpreter, all right? So now my definition of the function takes four parameters as input, uh, and I should be able to successfully call it uh, with, with four parameters like that. Um, all right, and then finally, um, um, let's look at value returning functions. So, so all the examples so far um, have taken input parameters but weren't returning an actual value. So what they were doing is just as a side effect, they were displaying some, some values on a standard output inside of the function. So the normal way we're going to be using functions in this class is more like a mathematical function. So we want to give inputs to the function, but the, the function should do some calculations and then return a result, okay? So the, the, uh, the Think Python textbook calls those fruitful functions. Um, so um, I, I normally just think of those as value returning functions. So in this case, um, yeah, I'll skip over that. You can, you can read that. Um, but let me, let me um, kind of skip over there to the, the, the value returning functions uh, that I had later on down here. So, um, and, and, and yeah, this is the only thing I'm gonna do on this and then kind of go over to the other two notebooks kind of real quickly. Um, so just as an example of a value returning function, let's say we have a function where we want to give uh, a single input, say the radius of, of a circle, and we want to calculate the area, right? So you use the return statement to return a result from a function. Um, so in this case, you know, I can calculate the area of a circle with a unit radius. So it should have an area of pi, right? Or an area of a circle uh, that has a radius of 42.42, which should end up being uh, this area here, right? So again, all we're doing is um, <clears throat> doing some calculations and then we're, we're returning a result, all right? Um, Okay, yeah, so another example, my absolute value. Um, one other thing, I probably talk about it down here at some point, um, but um, let me just mention then, so, so a, a thing that we'll be using a lot, uh, so, so this function here that I had, the, uh, the, the this, um, area of circle, just returns a single result, all right? So, um, um, so like you can do in other languages, so I directly use this result to, to display it. I mean, you can always take that value and assign it to a variable, for example. Again, I expect, um, you know, things like this should be familiar with whatever programming language you've been using. So, so here we're gonna call a function, it returns a result, and we're gonna assign that result into a new variable called area. Okay. Uh, but functions, um, uh, I just wanna show this kind of real quick, it's a little bit 
uh, uh, random, but uh, we'll use this a lot. Uh, in Python, you can easily write functions that return multiple values by returning what's known as a tuple, which if you read the, the next, uh, when, when you watch and read the next notebook, we talk about tuples a little bit in there. So, um, so if I want to, if I return three values, it's going to return these three as, as a separate tuple. So not, then I could do things like, um, Um, uh, assign those results that, that are returned into three new variables, okay? Um, but anyway, you, you'll see a lot of things like that in, in code that we use and write, right? So, so, so we return multiple things, uh, and then we, we get those multiple things back, and we assign those into variables. Um, um, and, and then, yeah, we can get those now and, and access those in the variables that we use from our function. Um, okay, so I, I kind of, I mean, um, you know, there's a few more things in, in this first notebook um, that you ought to read through on your, your yourself. Um, you know, Boolean expressions, you know, so all the logical operators are basically the same as in like C and Java. Um, so you should I would be able to use those, um, um, you know, less than, greater than, things like that to, to, to create Boolean expressions and, and to do things like write condition statements, so if statements and if else statements, um, and also write loops and things, so while loops and for loops. So I'll mostly leave that for you guys to look through. Um, there is uh, one kind of quick note, there is no like, a, uh, what do you call it, like a case switch statement, like you might be used to uh, in, in C or Java or some other languages. So if you, if you need to write a multi uh, chained condition statement, you have to use if else um, uh, if if else if uh, nested uh, if else statements basically. So. All right. Um, but but yeah. So I mean there, there there's a while loop um, and a um, and, a, and there's a for loop, um, uh, a for looping structure that I'll talk more about uh, in another notebook. Um, all right, and then I'll leave the rest of that notebook for you guys. Are you have questions are kind of about the the basics there? So I think there's one more thing that I kind of want to get to. I want to talk a little bit about the data types as well, and then I'll leave the rest of it for you guys to work through on your own, um, kind of picking up the basics of Python. So. Um, let me look at the second notebook then, um, unless people have some questions here. There we go. Um, so the second notebook is, is kind of really about uh, some of the more powerful stuff in Python. So this is the beginning of using um, the, the kind of the full power of the Python language. So talking about kind of the built-in higher level data types and data structures, okay? So, so Python, uh, if I didn't mention it, is, is um, considered a, a very high level language. Um, so it has things that are fundamental to it, like dictionaries, uh, a powerful list type, um, uh, sets and tuples uh, and things that you might not, you know, get as sort of basic um, data, data types um, 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 that you can use in other languages, right? Um, so it has, you know, strings um, in, in a fairly powerful string um, processing mechanisms. It supports Unicode strings for more international applications kind of natively. Um, so it has some overridden, uh, it has some overloaded operators. So 
Um, oh, uh, yeah, so one thing I should probably mention, though, is, um, um, or just show an example of, so this is a general concept in Python, and, and I first talk about it here in the second uh, notebook um, about string slicing. But in general, lots of these high-level data types, uh, we can do these kinds of slicing in Python. So you ought to pay attention to this um, um, because we'll use this for NumPy arrays and uh, basically everything, everywhere, uh, slicing stuff, okay? But uh, so, so to kind of to begin, um, and it's most basic, uh, data types, data structures that are sliceable uh, allow you to do stuff like this, okay? So they have an idea of, um, of, 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 of the items, the, in this case, the characters inside of the string. And you can iterate over the characters individually if you want to, like with a while or a for loop, okay? But, but in this case, most of these, for, for all these slicing mechanisms, you know, the first item in the collection uh, can be indexed starting at index zero. So Python is a zero-based indexing language like C. Um, so, so yeah, for this first string I have uh, where we gave it um, a value of banana, uh, the character index zero is, is a B. I can scroll back down here. And the character at index one is an A and so on, right? So this might, you know, this is kind of like uh, a, it, it, like an array that you might be um, um, familiar with um, from some languages, C and Java arrays, right? So, uh, you know, that and you can do that same sort of syntax. So if you want to, you can use uh, square braces to access one particular item in, in these kinds of data structures that could be sliced like this. So I can get the, the zero, if, I can use the while loop to get each character one by one, right? But the powerful thing that you don't have in other languages is this sort of slicing, okay? So, um, So let's run all these above here. Down to this point. So um, you can specify a begin and end index on a slice, right? Um, and if you omit the first one, it assumes zero. Um, so yeah, now our, 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 our string is a bit bigger, right? So actually, this only gives me the first five values from zero up to, but not including five, okay? So that gives me the character zero, one, two, three, and four, so Monty. Um, I can get the values from, so again, the way this works is it goes from index six. So, so if you count this up, P is at index six, it goes up to, but doesn't include the value at index 12. And again, if you admit that, um, it, it assumes you want all the way up to the last item in the sequence that you're slicing uh, here. Okay. But you don't have to start at the beginning and end at the end, so I can get something arbitrarily from the middle, like the values from three up to, we're not including eight. Um, you can use a third value to give um, a step size or a skip size. So if I want every other value, um, so starting at index zero, M, skip the O, but get the N, skip the T, get the Y, you know, I, can, I can use a skip of two or a step of two there. That gives me all the even characters, so character zero, two, four, six, eight. I get every odd character by starting at character one and skipping by two. So mini putu and aki yan. Um, another powerful thing you can do, um, you can index from the end instead of the beginning of these sorts of slicing uh, data structures. Uh, and and I'm, I'm on purpose using that generically because the things you can, that we're seeing that you can do with a list here, you can do this, uh, or sorry, with a string, you, you can do that with lists um, and, um, and other things. And, and especially when we get to like NumPy arrays, and pandas data frames, it's like all of those support this kind of slicing syntax, right? So it's kind of a, an important general concept. So, 
Um, so if you ask for negative one, that gets you from the end. So, so for Monte Python, negative one is the last character. Um, and if I want to get the last two characters, I can do beginning at the last, the, the second to last character up to the end, right? Um, kind of just a, um, a silly way to reverse a string so I can get all the characters but use a negative step size. So that'll, that'll give me, that'll step it down from the last one to the first character. So. All right, and I'm kind of losing my voice, so I'm going to wrap it up here. I'm just going to real quickly kind of show these others. You can work through uh, these things, right? So lists you can think of as the, they're like a string. So, so strings are immutable. Um, once you create a string, you can't modify it, uh, which I think I tried to show here. Um, so yeah, so, so like here, if you try and like, edit, if you try and change the value of H to a J by, by, by um, assigning it, you actually get an exception thrown um, if you do that. Um, and and the, I, the, the exception, um, well, I, yeah, I guess it, you know, it's pretty understandable. It does not support item assignment because strings are immutable. Right. So yeah, if you really want to do that with strings, you have to actually create new strings. So, so if I want a new string from the old one, but replacing the first character with a J, I have to do a J. Uh, and then uh, plus is overloaded to do concatenation. So I can concatenate that with the string from character one to the end to, to, to chop off the H um, and, and put a J there instead. Right? So I kind of think of lists as mutable versions of string, but, but the other thing that's different about a list um, is that, um, yeah, I should, uh, let's go down here. So I'll skip over some of these things. Um, but a list is a mutable kind of one of these collections that you can slice and do stuff. And the other thing is that um, uh, by default, a list doesn't hold just a list of characters, although you can do that if you want to. Um, but a, a list holds uh, a list of, of, of values of, of arbitrary types, okay? So I could have lists of integers or lists of strings, but I can have lists that, that hold mixed types, which you can't really do with like a plain arrays in Python and C, right? So, so now my stuff, um, so again, I can index these, so I can get the, the item at index zero out of my stuff. Um, and in this case, it's a string, right? I can get the item at index one, uh, which is an integer value. Um, you can actually even, oh, I, I show it here, you can actually have lists inside of lists. So you can make um, nested lists and nested kinds of other structures with this sort of thing. So in this case, the, the last item in the list is itself a list, right? So, so if I get the last item, again, using the kind of indexing and slicing that we talked about, um, you can do those with lists. So, so, so that will give me the last list. Um, all right, and so on. So I can get the item from one up to three from my list L. So that's this one. So this is item zero, one, two, three. So one up to, but not including three, is what the syntax means. So that's just going to give me item one and two um, if we slice that. All right. Here's where the, the for loop. So the for loop is meant to, to iterate over these kinds of, of slicing items that are sliceable. So um, uh, I think I probably showed it previously um, um, here. So the most basic way of using a for loop is just to iterate over the items like in a list. Right, so, um, So you use four, so if I just want to iterate over each item one by one in a collection like this, and again, I can do this for lists or strings uh, or all, lots of these other collections, you can iterate over them like this as well and get the items 
one by one and in whatever the order is that's defined for your your item your data type so. um, but lists are mutable unlike um, uh, strings so if I create a list of cheeses um, I can get the item zero, but I can also change it. So I can change the first one to be Danish blue, the last one to be Stilton, right? And now I have a different list where I've, I've gotten rid of the items that were in there before and changed them to new ones. So. All right, um, yeah, and so on. So I'll just mention these and because I'm losing my voice, um, I'm probably gonna wrap up. So that's lists. Uh, the other types that you kind of ought to kind of learn about is, is tuples um, and dictionaries and sets. Um, uh, oh, dictionaries was the next one. So dictionaries, if you've never run across a language that has what's known as like a map or a key value pair or a hash, this is really useful. Nowadays, you can get um, uh, maps in C++ using the standard template library. You can get these in the Java language and many others, okay? Um, uh, but, um, but you ought to learn to use uh, these. So we'll use dictionaries a lot. So a dictionary or a key value pair is just a association of, of a key with a value, okay? So I think of, so another way to, to think about this is I think of lists and strings as a map but they're restricted in that the only thing you can use as a key for like a string or a list, the key has to be an integer index, so zero, one, two, three, okay? So dictionaries uh, um, are a type of, of map like that, but instead of restricting it to only using an integer index, we can use arbitrary things for the keys, okay? So real quickly, this dictionary, we're using a string as the index, okay? So I, I index these people, uh, the, their birthdays, their birth year uh, by um, their name. Uh, and if you want to, then you can look it up, you can index your dictionary, but you have to give it the, the, the string key in this case, right? And if I want to pull out whatever the, val the values that was indexed by the key Newton, right? or the value indexed by the key Einstein, okay? Um, and that's probably all, mostly all I'll say about dictionaries, you can look at them. Um, you can use other things besides strings, so you can use uh, tuples um, or more complex types as your keys. Um, dictionaries are mutable, so you can um, change the value associated with the key like you can for a list. Okay, and then a, pup, a tuple I've mentioned already a couple times. A tuple is really a list, but it's a list that you can't change. So it's an immutable list, all right? So whenever you return, well, basically any time you make something separated by commas, that's going to define a tuple, okay? So it's actually not necessary. It's not required by the Python language, but by convention, a lot of people use um, a parentheses around a tuple to indicate it's a tuple. So, so the convention, so some of these are required syntactically, but um, so the convention is, is that we use um, curly braces around for, for, to, define, to define key value pairs for a dictionary. So this is your dictionary. Uh, we use square braces uh, around lists and um, um, uh, around uh, lists and string items. And we use parentheses around tuple, although in this case, these are kind of more required whenever you're creating a dictionary or a list. Um, oh, well, yeah, but uh, they're not really required for a tuple here, okay? So. Anyway, so, so a tuple, you know, just think of these as lists, but the, the only difference, everything that we talked about or that we talked about um, that you can do for, you can define all these. Uh, that we define for lists, you can do for tuples, except you just can't assign new values into the tuple, okay? So, so if, if you've um, been trying to change or mutate 
um, one of those, uh, you'll get an error. Right. Uh, but yeah, tuples are kind of important because we often, that, that's the way that we return, you know, multiple values, multiple results from a function is by returning a tuple of values. So. Um, all right, and yeah, that's basically it for the first two. There, there's some other stuff, but I'm not going to do go over today. And the third one about uh, objects and classes, you also will need to try and go through that this week, right? Um, yeah, there's another type, sets. Sets are useful, so you can read about that um, uh, in here. Okay. So I went through these pretty quickly, but but uh, you know that's the kind of the level that I hope. You know, that, that uh, if you work through these, again, if you've never kind of written a code in Python before, um, that you can work through these notebooks and at least understand kind of these basic ideas and maybe map it to what you are familiar with, uh, whatever language uh, or languages you hadn't used um, uh, previously. So. Um, all right, yeah, so my voice is kind of pretty much like gone here. Um, <laughs> yeah, so um, I'm, maybe I'll, I'll leave, leave it up here. Does anybody have, if you have last minute questions, let me know. Um, I forgot to mention, I mean, you can always send me chats privately, or of course, just or email me as well. So if you don't want everybody to see your chat, you can change it to only sh um, sending it to me. So, all right. Uh, I'm probably going to go ahead and stop the video now, although maybe I'll, I'll leave the meeting open for a few more minutes, see if any last, any people want to ask a last minute question or, or anything like that. So, but, but uh, yeah, kind of include conclusion for this, you know, get your dev box up and get to the point where you can work through these um, Python uh, Jupyter notebooks and then work through these. Okay, look at these, watch, watch my videos on these and, and, um, and yeah, that's kind of what you need to do for this first week. All right, with that, I'm gonna go ahead and stop. Um, go ahead and stop the recording uh, and, and I'll stick around, see if anybody had kind of questions or stuff, so.